Good morning. I recognize a few faces around here, and um, let's, let's get some energy in the room, right? We're going to raise some hands. How many of you have had coffee this morning? Quite a few, actually. That's great. How many did have a sandwich for breakfast over there? Right. Awesome. And how many are currently shareholders in Circum? Not one hand, but mine. I am actually that. So this is a room full of prospects, which is fantastic. I look forward to converting you. What we're doing at Circum is something that is very old in terms of ground principles. How many of you wash your clothes after they've been used because they're dirty? Quite a few. So you don't go out and buy new clothes and throw the, otherwise, the, the, the old ones, the, the dirty ones away, right? And how many of you would do that if washing your clothes would be more expensive than buying new ones? Oh, a few. Believers. Fantastic. Well, uh, what we have combined is actually the possibility of washing, uh, maybe that's not a, quite the right word, but purifying, cleaning used solvents and economic profit in one. So we are using circularity and chemistry, and that's why we formed Circum. We are a Swedish clean tech company. We're based in Varian, and we have been around since 2013. However, we've not been in production uh, until early last year. So we've only had continuous production for the past 14, 15 months. Um, in terms of solvents, solvents are used in the manufacturing and process industry. Uh, if we look at the major industries where solvents are used, that would be the pharmaceutical industry, automotive industry, um, you have the wood industry, the construction industry, the chemical industry. Once solvents are used, and they can be actually used many times over in one process, they constitute hazardous waste. And as such, they are sent to be destroyed. To give you an example of a few solvents, you have ethanol, methanol, you have NMP used in battery production, for example, you have acetone used in, in many different uh, areas. The actual extraction, the produce of chemical solvents, is often, um, they're often produced from fossil fuel uh, and derived from such. And the production of virgin solvents, um, they actually um, do contribute to global warming by large CO2 emissions that are um, important to consider. Once the solvents are used, uh, they constitute hazardous waste. And as I mentioned before, Hazardous waste is sent to destruction, and it's destroyed by burning, which in terms of waste is called incineration. This will be a word I'll be using a few times over. And incineration of solvents actually causes CO2 emissions to such a degree that it doesn't really make any sense to burn something that you can reuse again. And that's where we come in. We have built a facility in Varian that can clean and recycle used solvents in industrial scale. In that way, by cleaning and recycling solvents, we are reducing CO2 emissions, both from not being burned, but also from decreasing the need of newly produced virgin solvents. When it comes to um, our model, we receive used solvents 
or solvent waste, as it's called, to our facility in, in, at Circum in Varian, where it's cleaned and recycled, and then it's sent out to the industry, where it's reused, and once it constitutes hazardous waste again, it's resent to us to be cleaned, to be recycled, to be sent out to the industry. And we do this over and over and over again. And the beauty with chemical solvents is that you can actually do this over and over again, many times over. This optimizes the value of solvents, and this brings circularity into the system. This is an example of the process flow that you can see at our facility. Um, we receive waste streams of used solvents, which are the gray tanks. We fill them up with a waste stream. It's pre-treated, then it's distillated, if that's the technique that will be used in that particular solvent. And then it will, be, uh, it will become a new product that will be sent out to the industry. To give you an example of what we, what we do, here are three examples of solvents and solvent waste that we've received. Um, on the left side, you have the dirty ones. You can see how contaminated they are. And on the right side, you have the cleaned ones. Uh, so you get an idea of how much dirt we actually remove and contamination. This is our facility in Varian, in Vanishbori, which is basically in the lower middle of Sweden. Um, we have a, the first circular recycling facility of solvents in the Nordics. Um, we have an environmental permit to handle up to 20,000 tons per annum. We are the only facility in the Nordics that can offer circular recycling of solvents. And we can do this in industrial scale. We can do this, uh, this is a multi-purpose facility, which means that we can recycle many different kinds of solvents and we use different kind of techniques that we combine and tailor make tailor -made for the specific waste stream that we will handle at the facility. We are a young company. We have not been around for a long time, and we have had a clear go-to-market process. Uh, the first phase of our process has been a lot about getting our permit, which was uh, permitted in 2022, so uh, um, a year and a half ago. Um, then we needed some uh, we needed to have access to the waste market. So, um, making agreements uh, with waste managers that were established in the market and the large players, which is Tena Recycling, for example, which is one of the largest waste managers in the Nordics, was one crucial step to get further into the market because we become a um, subcontractor to Stena because we deliver we deliver recycling of solvents, which is one particular part of the whole waste management spectrum. Uh, and then once we have recycled the solvents, we would need somebody to put them out in the market again. So we have teamed up with a few chemical distributors in the market. So this, was, this phase was completed during 2022 and 2023. And we have now entered phase two where we're in a scale-up production phase. We're scaling up the production capacity at our facility in Varian. We are also uh, negotiating new collaborations. We are further down the road in, in quite a few uh, discussions with major uh, actors, players, in, uh, as well as the automotive industry, but also in the waste management industry. We are ISO certifying the facility, which expected to be completed during 2024, this year. 
We're also uh, working a lot about our communication and brand management so that we become more known in the Nordics in particular, uh, which we've seen has been uh, has given a lot of great results during the beginning of this year already. We are also diversifying our group of clients so that uh, we will be adding more client base to, to our customers. If we look at our capacity in terms of permit capacity, I, uh, I mentioned that we have a permit of handling, processing up to 20,000 tons per annum. About 85% um, of that is already contracted with Stena Recycling. Uh, it gives us more room to sign more deals and not all of that capacity has been, um, has been actually um, has been uh, during this year and the past year, we've not really come up to that capacity because we need to expand our production capacities. So those two, there is a, a difference between the two, uh, but that's what we're working on. In terms of the recycled solvents, approximately 45% of uh, the capacity has been signed for as well. So there is a lot of room for us to produce before we reach um, the roof of, of those agreements. We have been in development phase for quite some while, but have moved to a commercialization phase during past year. Um, our two most important ongoing projects um, that we started last year are towards the uh, automotive industry, uh, where we are uh, introducing circular recycling of the specific solvents that are used in the auto industry. We have come rather far in that and we expect to have our first agreement in that area during the second half of this year. When it comes to the pharmaceutical industry, we have worked very hard to, um, to tailor make a recycling model that addresses particularly the solvents and the contaminations that come th from the pharma industry. We've come quite far and that's um, a project that's been also granted, uh, partially financed from Klimat Klivet and EU. Uh, so we're very much looking forward to delivering results on that project during the second half of this year uh, and the first half of next year. Uh, it's a long project um, and it's rather complicated, but we've come very far so far. When we look at the driving factors that uh, drive the interest for our solutions and for the services that we offer, there are some regular demands that are on the rise, both in the EU, but also in Sweden locally. Um, we have demands for sustainability reporting, which makes uh, waste not being able to just be swept under the carpet anymore, but you have to report uh, your climate impact on that, which makes it much more interesting to find recycling models that would reduce your climate impact. We have uh, the demand for end of waste and the project that is ongoing in the EU. We have many different recycling requirements driven by regulatory requirements that have entered this year. We also have higher environmental fees and we have increased costs for incineration. And the costs for incineration are increasing as we have seen uh, during this year. Uh, we're talking about um, double, digits, double digits increases uh, measured towards last year's prices. When it comes to geopolitical concerns, companies are looking for um, um, optimizing their supply chains. Um, they're looking into the costs for raw materials. And there, there's also a demand for locally produced produce. Um, so we have a lot to offer in that department as being the first and the only facility in the Nordic that can offer that. 
Uh, as the first company that has a facility for recycling, uh, circular recycling of solvents, we have a first mover advantage. We have an environmentally friendly recycling methodology and technology that we implement uh, in our facility. Um, we, uh, if we look into the barriers of entry, uh, this is a multi-year process where you have to have access to land. You need the permits, you need, to, uh, you need to get equipment, you need the knowledge, which takes years to build up, and also market establishm establishment and customer base. We're talking about at least three-year contracts on each recurring waste, waste stream, which uh, is negotiated every third year. So you can imagine that once you have those contracts, they will be, this is a quite sticky situation for a first mover, which is uh, a great situation for us to be in. We have a very clear circular business model that I have um, mentioned, and it's all about recycle, reuse, and reduce. And when we say reduce, we reduce the waste that is sent to incineration, and we reduce the need for virgin solvents. This is, according to us, a triple win situation. Our management and board, um, myself as CEO, we have Andreas Wadstedt, who is Chief Operating Officer, and Thomas Paulson, who is Chief Financial Officer. The board is Mats Persson, Åse Bie, Magnus Jink, and Jonas Stålhanske. We have been traded on the Nasdaq First North since 2020, and hopefully, Many more of you will be shareholders by the end of this day. Our financial performance during last year uh, is noticeably um, uh, better than it's been before. It's the first year that we've had continuous production. It's our startup year in the facility. And uh, something that I'm very proud of is that we have managed to increase net sales withholding the cost base, which is an achievement in itself. And we're very much looking toward 2024, and we aim to become profitable by the end of this year. So to sum up, uh, we offer a circular business model that addresses a large market need. We have a robust growth strategy that will deliver strong cash flows and will make as well Circum as all other parties involved economically profitable in the process. We have the only facility in the Nordics that offers circular recycling of solvents and the facility is also in commercial operation as we speak. We can handle and process large volumes at industrial scale and also, we uh, offer, with our business model, significant reduction of CO2 emissions, not only by um, reducing the waste that's been incinerated, but also by reducing the need for virgin solvents. So with that, I would like to thank you for your interest and wish you a great day. Thank you.